Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Obi Amo. It's Thank really you. been an instructive discussion with you. Thank you so Many much. Many thanks for spending some time with us this morning. And also thanks to Dr. Richard Fiadomo, who is the president of the Chamber of Local Governance, as well as uh, the Honorable Bismarck Inkum of Gomua West and Abraham Amaliba, who is the uh, director of legal affairs for the NDC. We take a break and we'll be right back with the Takradi woman's story. Introducing Nestle Milo All-in-One Nutrimix, the goodness of malt, milk and cocoa in Milo, and even more milk. Just add to water and enjoy the perfect cup of winning energy. Milo! Milo! This advertisement has been vetted and approved by... From 16 beautiful and intelligent women, six have made it to the ultimate grand finale of GMB 2021. Who will be crowned Ghana's most beautiful queen 2021? Sunday, 3rd October. Is it Safwa? Menu. Akosia Mfojo Settle Wedaga Vote for your favorite via short code star 713 star 13 hash GMB Rediscovering True Beauty And is sponsored by Lavon's Tomato Mix, Camel now from Kerex, Freedom from Casa Precum, GTP, Darling Lemon Drink, Airtel Tigo's Big Time Bundles, Blue Fart, Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Heaven Black Mosquito Spray and Coil, and Napa Mackerel, Geisha, Close Up, Ayo Insurance, Fun Milk Nutri Day Yogurt, and supported by. If we see food in Bronya, connect FM with Sing Trade Fair in Chamakai or a Badubio. Now, film was an hour. Jitter was a great day. No, was a boy in the grounds of all. Connect FM with Sing Trade Fair or Shasu Kuda, 29th September. Nay, if you know, consider that October. What's up, Cradamo? Nay, you know, Company Sakasin and Jumokuka Kramba and the one of the Naru Pepe. I was at Anna Mamana Kataka Kupa. Bolonto, Nasan for Tanasi, Francis Ramaya Register Way, zero two four four two four four zero two seven, and a zero five four five five seven two eight five six. Connect FM was in Trade Fair, Kade, or your twenty ninth September, Sikasitan October, Water Cradamon, and you can now work for your Tap Cradamon. Connect FM was in Trade Fair, and it is with the Fuma and the Pronya, Fuma and the Pronya. Go Farming. Show Saturdays at 4 p.m. on TV3. Skipping breakfast is not ideal because you may end up missing some essential nutrients and also end up snacking all throughout the day. So hop on the fat to fit train and lose weight the, the right, right way. way. Let go! I am so looking forward to speaking to Mommy and Craig Gazy. Help me welcome her on the show. Have you ever said to yourself that you don't have enough time in the day because you've got too many things to do? Looking at blocking your time helps you to move away from the traditional to-do list, yes. which can be frustrating. Yes. It can be underproductive. I lost my job. 
So I was just contemplating what to do for a living before um, I get another job. The corporate entity is not um, a thing that mm. is hanging. It is made up of, of human people. beings. Mm -hmm. So when the human beings individually are struggling, that corporate entity struggles. Ups. Today's woman shows Sundays at 3 p.m. and repeats Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on TV3. Thank you very much for joining us on the key points. Continue to send your messages to us on 055-369-8789. Now this week, the nation has been transfixed by the curious case of the Takradi woman, Josephine Peñi Mensa, who in the words of the police, disappeared and reappeared and was not kidnapped as earlier claimed by her husband and family. The last 24 hours have been especially dramatic as police announced via social media that she had recanted her claims about being pregnant and being kidnapped. We are told she has also appealed to the police not to prosecute her. Uh, we are learning that, there will, that the lady is receiving more medical help, but for now she is in custody of the police at the Central Police Station in Takradi in the western region. Whew, what an end uh, to what has been a packed uh, week, you know, on, on this issue. So we are learning that three people were also charged for conspiracy. They've not been identified by the police. But is that all? Or do you, maybe like me, remain a bit unconvinced? Some are asking if she even had legal representation as she recanted. Or did she just succumb to the pressure? Do we continue to wait and see? And so we moved on to the issue of the Takradi kidnap woman and matters arising. Our guest this morning to put uh, some of the issues in perspective, the Honorable Nana Oye Bampoado, former gender minister, human rights and gender activist, also a deep sunny uh, security analyst. Then I must put on record that we have made efforts to reach uh, the Ghana police, particularly the director general of the Ghana police service, uh, uh, ACP Kwesi Furi, but he's been unresponsive. Our efforts to get a representation and comments from the Western Region Police Commander and PRO has also uh, been declined. So that's how come we're going without a police representation this morning. Thank Thank you both for making some time for us this thank morning you. on Key Points. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thanks. You. Good morning. Honorable Bampuado, thank you for coming in. Uh, Mr. Thank Sani, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. So, let me start with you, Adib. How do you describe this entire saga in the last 24 hours? Well, um, first of all, a very good morning to yourself, uh, your production team, and your viewers alike. Um, in your introduction, you said it's the end. It's not the end. It's not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning yeah. <laughs> I'm sure uh, as, as the days go by, a lot of uh, revelations is going to come. But I have been very categorical from the beginning that we need to assess uh, the, the, the victim's uh, mental capacity in as much as we're concerned about, you know, uh, ensuring that the investigation is done in a timely manner. Uh, because in uh, criminology, when investigating a crime, we see your biggest enemy is time. Uh, we should also be concerned about her mental status. Uh, because if we push her to give information, she might, one, be incoherent. Uh, secondly, she might even mislead uh, the police. Uh, there are so many questions that still remains unanswered. But one thing is for sure. The aftermath of the said kidnapping hasn't been well managed by the police. I mean, we have a protocol uh, to follow in dealing with crisis, and I think the police would need a lot more training in crisis management uh, because we saw the same mistakes made um, with the Takra, the missing girls, and I'm, I'm, most shockingly, the same mistakes are repeated uh, uh, with this one because I would have expected that first and foremost you get a liaison uh, between the police and the family uh, because sometimes the families have the tendency to undermine investigation just because they are human, just because they are in a state of denial. That is why it's important that you keep them 
uh, informed every step of the way, but at the same time try to manage information so it doesn't compromise the investigation uh, in the first place. Um, we also see that the crime is one thing, management of the aftermath is another. And if it is not well managed, there's always a tendency of the aftermath even becoming more injurious than the crime itself and that's exactly what we saw okay At so let me let me let me put you on hold there before we go to into those further details honorable bampoado how do you describe the last 24 hours it's very disturbing it's very disturbing that lessons have not been learned it's disappointing that the police have not acted professionally that the regional minister who is in charge or the chair or the regional security council of the Western region has also not acted professionally. And when I talk about lessons learned, uh, we saw what happened with the Takrade 3. So my assessment of the police statements has been that it seems like they are reacting, they are being reactive, they are responding to the public pressure and the public sentiments and the public concerns instead of staying focused and being professional about how they would deal with this um, issue. Um, you can see a disconnect between the regional coordinating, the security coordinating council, I mean the security network headed by the regional minister and the police service. They are, they are contradicting each other. There's this issue about ransom paid. The regional minister's aid is saying that 3,000 CDs was handed over to the police for ransom. The police are denying it. The regional minister, within 24 hours or so, of the uh, pinging, Mensa being um, reappearing, issues a public statement. We don't know whether it was with, in, uh, with um, the support or cooperation of the police service. Then the police service also issues a statement, I think on the 23rd or so, and the, one of the focus of the statement is how they had 40 officers and how, and then they are congratulating the 40 officers who have worked night and day and all that. So you can see uh, they still have the bruises of the uh, Takrade, the three kidnapped. The Takrade girls. Yes, the Takrade girls. girls. They still have the bruises and they are trying to show that, look, we are working on this. But when you even read the statement, they say that they informed the family of Pinyin Mensa, but they did not. The Pinyin was found disoriented by a carpenter on the grounds of uh, the Jehovah Witness at uh, Zitulani mm -hmm. in Axim. And I've listened to the account of um, Kwesi Nanao, the, the, the carpenter, the gentleman. Him, yes, and he's him. saying that she used sign language and wrote the number of a pastor on a piece of paper. And then he called the pastor and then also called the family. So, and then he was the one who even called the police and got the police to come over. So there are some contradictions. For me, the most important and most critical is the lady paying in Mensa? Has she been given legal assistance? Was she informed of her right to remain silence, silent? Under what circumstances was her confession procured? Who were the professionals there? Has she received psychiatric help? Has she seen a clinical psychologist? What is the composition of the team dealing with this case. Because there are medical issues, there are psychological issues, there are issues relating to her mental state, and then also there are criminal issues. And then even this whole, why is the police focusing on whether she's pregnant or not? Where is the criminal element? If the husband reported the case um, a day after, a day after, I think she got she missing got on missing Thursday. Last week on a Thursday, Thursday and on a Friday. And then on the Friday, the husband yeah. reported. It was the husband who told the police that she was pregnant. And so if the husband told the police she was pregnant and you have found out, we are not sure, you found out that she's not pregnant, where is the criminal element? We as Ghanaians are concerned about the kidnapping. When the, the, you read, whether she was kidnapped, whether she was kidnapped, kidnapped or, or not. Mm -hmm and your investigations on that. Why is the police focusing 
on whether she was pregnant or not and the fact that she has faked the pregnancy. In terms of security, in terms of law and order, I would have thought that the focus would have been on the kidnapping. The pregnancy is an element, is a component of the investigation. But we are now scared of getting kidnapped because there are so many reports. You just Google kidnapping in Ghana and it's all over Ghana. And it looks like the Western region is uh, the Western a region, certain target. Yes. Ajib will give us more You see, on so that. for me, we want to know. And I'm, I'm disappointed that ACP Kwesi Fori has not responded to calls by TV3 to provide information or even to, um, uh, to get a representative for this program. Because this is a topical issue presently in Ghana. There's a lot of discussion on it. And we are worried about our safety and security. For the first time in my life, I will not go out alone. I will not drive alone after 10 p.m. Because I'm not too sure about the security situation and whether I'm safe or not. This is the very first time in my life I could drive around 3 a.m., 2 a.m., 12 midnight. But now I'm being more careful oh, sure. because of the reports that I'm reading about kidnapping. Okay, L let me come to Adib. I mean, there's been the criticism that the police are focusing so much on the pregnancy. Maybe you can give us a view. Maybe some of us may have missed it. Has there been an established timeline of the kidnapping, who is involved, where it happened, whether it didn't happen, that kind of thing? Because we all seem to have been sidetracked by this whole pregnancy business, whether she was pregnant or not. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Like I indicated earlier, uh, the manner <coughs> in which the whole affair is managed is uh, what is adding to the seeming lack of trust and confidence in the police and, and exactly uh, what, what they are doing. Uh, like I also indicated, currently there are a lot of questions that really, as a matter of fact, remains unanswered. Um, before the police came out with a statement with respect to the kidnapping, the, mm. the, the, the initial statement that came. Uh, I the think I minister, have it, yeah. minister the regional minister went on radio, yes. Yes, so the 23rd. regional minister went out prior Before to the, the issuance of that, of that statement. statement. Mm. Yes. And he categorically stated that uh, the lady was not pregnant. So mm. he set in motion that pregnancy agenda, okay? And um, I thought that it was somewhat irresponsible in the, on the part of the regional minister to not exercise some level of due diligence. But is that, is that fair? Because his narrative hasn't changed from the police's narrative in the last couple no, of days. No, Nothing but, seems to have changed. But you see, when you're dealing with a crisis situation, yeah. uh, information is very important. Mm -hmm. The way you couch it, you know, the, 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 the timing of the information, okay? And I'll tell you why it was a big mistake on the part of the minister to come out with that information, okay? I personally went on social media to just, you know, gather views and opinions about what is going on. It would interest you to know that a vast majority of uh, p persons responding I have seen on the issue respond, uh, are indicating that the police statement is a grand scheme to protect the minister. Mm. You, you, you get me? Because they wouldn't want the minister to be dragged into disrepute. And that some were even opining that there were some hands <clears throat> involved and the police is just trying to protect them. I know full well that the regional minister, like uh, Nana Oyi rightly mentioned, is the chairman of the regional security council. And so by virtue of him being the chair, would be privy to some information, okay? But it wasn't in his place to come out with that information because it is the police that has to uh, sit around a table and decide what information to bring out and what information not to. You see, investigation is not a football match, so you don't expect live commentary every mm -hmm. step of the way. And it is always couched to 
in the first place, update the public, and secondly, protect the sanctity, protect the integrity of the investigation. So the fact that the minister has come out to say those things, trust me, is what has created widespread controversy and bickering among the section of, of the population. If he had zipped, I'm pretty sure that a statement from the police would have been enough to end all of these uh, controversies. So there are still lots of questions that really has to be answered, including the timelines, whether some other persons were involved. Because currently what we know is, and the police has been quite emphatic about it, that the pregnancy is fake and the kidnapping is fake. Yes, and they said they've arrested they've three people for conspiracy. They didn't tell us who these people Well, I were. understand uh, the, the, the mother but that's the even later. And the husband. No, that, that's even later. later. That's okay. even later. They put it in their statement. But first, let's hear the, some of the residents from Takradi who were quite unhappy with the, the regional minister and, and his comments and their views on how this has all gone down. And you think because... It's interesting because the original minister made the statement. They can't make him come and re uh, apologize mm -hmm. for it. So, this, so their statement has to now reflect that. Yes, that's not. Okay. But you know the police, they fear politicians. Also should not have gone on radio to say this. A day before we were kidnapped, I saw the girl. I saw her a day before she went missing and she was still pregnant. She even showed me her stomach when I asked if she hadn't put to birth yet. Nobody can convince me that she was not pregnant. She was. The minister should have hastened slowly. I know the woman and she has been pregnant for months. I even have photos of her. We've also been speaking with this particular watchy seller who says that she has been very close to just being for the past three weeks. She used to struggle during the pregnancy. She could barely walk. She could not even cook. But we leave it to God if authority says she was not. Tata is 70 years old. She lives very close to Josephine's house. And she tells us that this is how Josephine works anytime she sees her. So this is what we know so far. Sources at the Azim government hospital are telling us that the doctor who performed observation on Josephine Payne Minister is Jerry Abobra. That for the past six days, there's no sign that Josephine had given birth. Again, Josephine was not lactating. So per that conclusion, they can say that Josephine was not pregnant. Our colleague from the Western region there bringing us that update and the views of some of the residents of Takradi. But Nana Oye, pregnancy is a medical condition. We cannot see someone and just automatically assume that the person is pregnant. The person may have uh, other medical conditions like fibroid, which may lead to an extended uh, uh, stomach and the like. So maybe the residents are also jumping the gun. Only a qualified medical clinician can determine that. That is true. Um, we leave that to the health sector and the medical profession to ascertain and determine whether or not Payin Mensa was pregnant. That is their expertise. But looking at the context and looking at the broader issue of safety, of security, especially maintaining law and order, I believe that this information ought to have been managed in a more professional way by first the regional minister and the regional security council of the western region and the ghana police service the, the and in managing in managing this whole there should have been a team made up of a clinical psychologists medical doctors 
social welfare, and the Ghana police. Immediately, she reappeared and all these, um, like the security reports came about um, fake pregnancy and all that. A team should have been assembled to assess the situation, to assess her, and then take a decision on how, what sort of information to put out there. Okay, there is because there, there what has happened is an, uh, inf inflamed the community. Mm. The community are not happy and they, they, they hold curses and all that. And that is so unnecessary. If the Ghana Police and Regional Security Council, led by the regional minister, had managed this, and why I'm concerned and worried is that we had a similar situation when the three girls were kidnapped. And why people do not trust the police is that we had the topmost officer, the CID Director General, coming up with a statement that the girls had been found and what do we have? Several months down the line, we see the remains, we see bones and skeletons. And so that is why people do not trust what the police is saying. And I suppose that is why the police is trying to also react and uh, come up with all these statements to show that this time around, they are doing their job. And unfortunately, they are botching, they are messing it up okay, because but, of that. But the, the view is that the pregnancy or not is an integral part of the police's investigation. And it may not be wrong for them to hamper on that because there are security issues involved. If truly she was pregnant and had been found afterwards and she is not, there's a concern about where is the newborn you know there's a concern about the security situation about whether this was for quote unquote ritual purposes and the, and that is what for some is why the pregnancy issue is critical because if there has been any attempt to take the pregnancy from her or deprive her of her newborn that's a major security challenge same location western region we saw what happened with the Takarade, the three girls. Same circumstances, disappearance. And so within that context, the police should be sensitive to how they go about not just, not just investigating, but managing the information that they give to the public and even the approach and the sort of information so that people are very clear in their minds. And, and I would even have, um, in, with respect to the pregnancy, maybe even the medical doctors should have been the one communicating. Like, bring a whole team and get the medical doctors to do that. If they, then it sort of allays the fears and reduces the uh, suspicions of the general public. Because of the past experiences and circumstances with respect to Western region, with respect to police in Western region, and with respect to the issue of kidnapping and females. Because it's the same scenario playing out. So they should have really been strategic and thought through how to manage this. And it's all to allay fears and all to all the, the, the shouting and the disturbances in the community it's what I am also, I am worried about. And the police could have managed this better and have been more professional so that they sort of reduce all this. And like, um, and, and like he, uh, said. he said, yes, that, you know, involve the family. So get the, I mean, get a, a representative of the family, engage with the family. Because these are the same complaints that the families of the Takradi girls said about the insufficient information and the failure to communicate with them and they're reading all this on air. And, and this also fueled that um, distrust between the families of the Takradi girls and also that. So, so things have to be done. The police have to manage this in a much, much more professional um, way. Adib, yes, come in, Adib, because for many, the pregnant, and I, I put this to you as well, the pregnancy issue for many is fundamental. It is the basis on which if, a newborn has been taken from the mother or the circumstances surrounding the loss of that newborn is not known 
the police feel that that is the immediate issue to be tackled. They don't want women losing their children in, in, in Takrade or in the Western region. And so the issue of the kidnapping then comes obviously later. Well, well uh, Jifa, I would agree with you to some extent. Um, it's an incontrovertible fact that uh, the pregnancy should be part of the whole investigation. But quote me anyway, now the investigation has gone beyond finding out the truth to rather vindicating the police, mm -hmm. shaming the woman, shaming the community. But if, but if she said she faked the pregnancy, the faked the death, is that... Uh, fake that kidnapping is that shaming her she, no, no, she you recanted see, when, when you when you when you i mean you are a communicator even when you go through the lines the communication lines put out there by the police mm -hmm. it is so obvious that it is an attempt to vindicate the the, the police yes. because in recent times people have had a reason to be worried about what is going on in the country with respect to the, the insecurity situation a lot of people have lost trust and confidence in the police and i mean i've been very categorical right from when uh, Dan Perry was uh, uh, appointed as acting igp i said that he has a lot of work to do so far as engendering the the, the trust and uh, 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 respect for the police within the, the public is concerned. Because as we stand now, I mean, there are instances when people are victims of crime. They don't even report to the police. You ask them, they, they, they ask you to what end. Some of them tell you that when they go to the police, if they don't have a vehicle, it becomes a challenge because you have to get a taxi to transport the police to the crime scene. And some also contend that there are instances when they have to pay money you know so we really need to build that trust because if there was that trust a statement from the police should have been enough to put all of these to rest mm -hmm. unfortunately yes. that and is then not. you see the um the police are not even i mean they are being callous oh with respect to the victim whatever it is whatever she's a suspect fine should she been put in cells in her condition should she, I mean, even she was, if, she was in whatever. hospital, she was at the Fia yes. Hospital, but it's yes. only now that she's been arrested uh, for faking the kidnapping and the pregnancy, where she even confessed that it looks like she had been pregnant but lost the baby, but then she didn't know how Has to now. Has there been an assessment? Mental the, assessment. By, no, by, yes. Has there been a mental health? Has there been an assessment of her state of mind? Is she in the correct state of mind? Because, okay, if it is not true that she's faked one issue, if even it is true that she's faked the pregnancy, would an, a somebody under normal circumstances fake a pregnancy? And then uh, the ransom asked, they say it was 500 Ghana. Then it was increased to 1,000. And then the regional minister says he gave 3,000. I mean, looking at all this, for 3,000, 1,000, or 500, there are obviously some issues and problems. And I would feel more comfortable if the police had come up with a medical assessment and they, said... Come, they came up with a, the medical, a medical assessment. assessment. Well, they they okay. came up and yeah. said, Azim Takradi and Ife Kwanta all say that she, she, uh, she's not pregnant. Yes. As to what... And then one of the medical facilities even said that they even denied it. Denied because well, I can't remember privacy. which one. Yes, yes. one yes. of them. Because yes. the issues of uh, privacy, I mean, how can you just be i mean come public with somebody's medical records as to whether she's pregnant or not and as to whether she even had um, you know support or her lawyer i mean because they should the police have even insisted on she they could even have gone to ghana legal aid board to couldn't, insist. Legal, couldn't legal aid have also rendered their services well if they haven't been approached you see but legal aid board could have even provided this woman mm. with legal mm. because of the circumstance because sometimes you go to court and there's a murder case or so the judge is a, the judge would Has actually appoint, appoint a lawyer mm. and under these them. circumstances with the hindsight of what happened a few years ago i'd have thought that the police would insist 
and ensure that she has legal representation so that as they go through the investigation and the other processes with her, they are assured that she's being represented and she's being given um, legal advice. So for me, these are all the very worrying, uh, um, very worrying circumstances in respect of um, the, the professional approach that the police ought to have taken in right. this particular Jifa, case. Jifa, Jifa, they can go to a hundred medical facilities. If you don't follow the right protocol, it amounts to nothing. It's completely useless. Okay? And Nana we is asking very legitimate questions. Okay? Were there third parties? Who are the third parties? Is it just the police? I mean, I would have expected that the police have a member of her family present, apart from the legal uh, representation, and perhaps another party. They, have so it they is said they had provided inclusive. a team. You know, the police also has psychologists and the like. And they said we, we they had also yes. provided some service like but, that. But the trust is, is a major issue. True and in, this in, in the midst of all of these, the police should have you know, taking that into consideration and made sure that all of these, you know, persons are available or present. Yes. Okay. And if, that, if even the, in their statement, instead of focusing on the 40 officers working day and night and congratulating them, when they didn't even find the woman, it was a carpenter who found the woman, um, they could have even made those, um, added that to their statement. We have sought legal assistance for her. She has a lawyer who is helping. Uh, she has been referred, I mean, social welfare. We have a team, social welfare. Uh, we have referred a clinical psychologist who is, that would have enriched the statement and Ghanaians would have been comforted that she is also being, her interest is being catered for whatever the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I mean, this statement the police came out with yesterday, was not necessary? That she, that she has confessed. Recanted. She had was that that necessary but if she has you, its information it's to vindicate, it's to vindicate no, the police they are trying not to right? defend themselves <laughs> okay it's, Let, all, it's about their image okay let's not about um, um uh, paying mensa okay. which Let, is worrying okay and some of your messages on twitter and via whatsapp line i'll take some of them now this one from um a gentleman who terms his name fix ghana now why are we only looking at the pregnancy but not at the kidnapping issues the police are no more talking about whether the lady was indeed kidnapped our focus should be on the kidnapping issues not the fake pregnancy well the police have also said that the kidnapping was fake uh, this other message says the kidnapped Akradi woman saga remains unresolved for many of us as responsible citizens my question is was she missing was she indeed pregnant was she kidnapped? Is she having legal representation? We need to know. And that's from Aziz Inwa. Prince from Koforidria asks, on whose authority did the Western Regional Minister make payment to the alleged kidnappers of the Takradi uh, missing woman? If the minister hadn't spoken, we would have taken the police release as sacrosanct. But now it seems there's some politics in the case. Um, and uh, some of your other messages coming from WhatsApp says, the Western Regional Minister should allow the security agencies to do their work. The interference of ministers in security matters hurts the nation. This is the reason why uh, sometimes people were shot at Idra. That's from Osman in Tamale. Uh, from Johnny in Sunya, he says, to be honest, why can't the police complete their investigation before coming out with a final statement. It was the husband who reported that his wife was pregnant, not the wife. So it could be that the wife deceived the husband. Then why are they charging the man for criminal uh, charges? Uh, the Western Regional, I think that one has come already, and this one uh, from Baba at Nkoko. Good morning, TV3. Based on past experience on the three missing Takradi girls, I don't consider the police's communique to be entirely true. She could have been forced to speak in their favor. We pray that we achieve a positive result at the end of the day. And I think those are your messages that have uh, come through. So, um, Adib, in reference to this case, so what next now? Because we are told she's being held at the uh, central police station. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question of what then would they 
be charging her for because what, fake yeah. pregnancy yeah. is it's not wash. it's not a criminally it's inclined it's uh, accusation. Yeah. And then but you can't even say deceit of public officer no. because she did not mm -hmm. complain. She did not no. tell the police that she was pregnant. Yeah. So, so, so what I think next? That, um, okay, if they have to file charges against her, they can go ahead uh, and do that. But I would have thought that the focus will be very much on uh, whether she was kidnapped or not, or whether it was all staged. Um, an attempt should also be made to ascertain whether she had uh, support or help from somewhere, because I understand calls were made and some monies were paid, and, and that obviously is criminal, even though I'm not a lawyer. But um, when we concentrated very much on the pregnancy, it will not wash, uh, uh, because, I mean, it's a private issue. I mean, if I tell you I'm pregnant and the next minute you don't find uh, a baby, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't negate anything because it's, it's my life, it's my choice, okay? So I think that the seeming over-concentration on the pregnancy is, is unfortunate. But most importantly, Jifa, going forward, the police has a lot of work to do in improving their image in the eyes of the public. But it's, haven't it's they been doing that? They've been giving regular updates on issues, not issuing statements, trying to engage on social it's, media, share with the public that they are watching okay. and all that. Okay, well, uh, when you take a closer look at uh, the nine pillion principles of modern day policing, as opined by Sir Robert Peel, he founded the Metropolitan Police in the UK and later became the British uh, Prime Minister, is hinged on certain pillars. But Cutting across all those pillars is your ability to get the buy-in of the population. The people should be made to realize that they mandated you to perform that service on their behalf and that the uniform you wear is provided by them. It has to go through, it has to go beyond the digital, you know, means of reaching out to the people. We need the police in front of our doors knocking on our businesses, asking us what our menacing security challenges are and what they can do to improve their service. That is why it's a service and not a force, okay? So they have to step out from the comfort of their officers. Or you see them in, you know, large Tundra, you know, pickups uh, going on patrols. They might be near you, but they are far away from you. So we need to see more of the police presence in these communities. And in criminology, we have what we call broken glass theory. It was propounded somewhere in the late 1980s. It's simply based on the premise that as minor as an offense it is for a glass to be broken, if you report to the police and nothing is done about that, uh, tomorrow it might be a human being getting killed. So police should go beyond looking at people's faces before giving them the attention they need. All cases that comes before the police should be considered equal and should be dealt with as such, okay? Because currently, as it stands, I know of like three, four people who are victims of crime who have not even reported to the police. You know, I sell security systems mm -hmm. and mostly when there's a home invasion, I go to help the clients play back and they just keep the tape. And I ask them, but you have to report to the police, okay? And another point is, Ghanaians, a lot of Ghanaians are not reporting crimes to the police because of their personal safety. Because we don't have a robust witness protection regime. So, because when, they, they've announced 50,000 cities, but you know, the psychology behind the 50,000 cities goes beyond the money. Before I give out information to the police, the first thing I look out for is my safety. Because you give out information and the next minute the whole community knows that you are the rats amongst us. So it's important that going forward, we need to have a robust witness protection regime that will be hinged on protecting the identity and ensuring security for people who come out with information to help the police make sense of the myriad of cases be, be, before them. And lastly, there's also the need for the police to have an anti-kidnap unit 
within the Ghana police. You think we've like, reached that stage now? Because we are heading towards that stage, you know, like in Nigeria. I mean, I have personally done a lot of research into kidnapping, especially in Nigeria. And it's, uh, kidnapping is one of the most virulent crimes when it comes to banditry. And we've had an influx. I'm not suggesting that all immigrants are criminals, but because of the influx, of these people from other countries, especially in Nigeria, some of them are criminals. You would realize that a lot of these kidnappings, okay, either would have a foreigner involved or the indirectly involved, okay, because they are transferring the knowledge to their Ghanaian counterparts. As a matter of fact, kidnapping is so un-Ghanian. In the past, all we knew is you go to circle, buy a phone, you get home and it's kiso. <laughs> you know, but, but now it has attained a different, you know, uh, 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 character. character that that is really putting a lot of fear into the Ghanaian population. The so we need to stop it in this. Trap. The police mentioned in their statement that the Western region is getting known more and yeah. more for yes. for kidnapping. Yeah. So for you, uh, a kidnapping unit is that what you call it? Yes, an anti kidnapping, anti -kidnapping unit. unit exactly. is important. It's very important. And you know, development comes with its own challenges. Yeah. Um, crime would definitely go back because I mean go up because the Western region is becoming a melting pot of activities, you know, with different people from all walks of life and from all across the subcontinent mm -hmm. converging there. All right, and Sikabe fear, there's money <laughs> in the Western region. I mean, uh, a lot of people have been lifted up you know within the social structure because of the oil fight and of course the, the businesses business and the services that have so been it is a lucrative it, it, it's emerging to be a lucrative market for uh, uh, for kidnappers mm. and 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 there's a psychology behind kidnapping as well it thrives where it is condoned so when you kidnap and people pay, that is why I find it quite unfortunate that 3,000 cities was, was paid, yeah, you know, to because to you, are, you are motivating the crime. You are motivating more and more people to go into kidnapping as an easier way of making money fast. Mm. Yes, no, no. I, I, I agree that, and that is also one gap with the Ghana police service and policing in Ghana. What are the crime trends? Because um, when I read the papers and go on social media, I see kidnapping is occurring more and more, and it's occurring throughout the country. Just before I came, I was checking there's uh, kidnapping in Savannah region, kidnapping in Oti region, kidnapping in Ashanti region, and these are just cursory reports um, on the media, and then also Western region. And it is the duty and responsibility of the police to provide Ghanaians with information on these crime trends so that it advises us on our daily business as we're going. Armed robbery is also a big issue because I'm sure you've seen the video yes, there have of been these a number uh, of moto guys on moto guy. Uh, I mean, it's just like they're picking up um, a, a delivery. Package. A package. They just and drive they just and, then they just, and then it's interesting that the, whoever was driving the car, the, the doors were not locked and yes. all that. But if the police had provided information on, okay, armed robbery, there's, they may not even say armed robbery is increasing, but offer tips through social media, etc., to Ghanaians on how to address armed robbery, I mean, uh, and then also the issue of uh, kidnapping. I remember there was one police officer, I've forgotten his name, he used, to, he used to have a column in some of the newspapers, and he used to offer, is it Tete? I think he's uh, called Freeman Tete. Tete. Freeman Tete, Freeman Tete, and all that. Mm. And we need to overhaul the policing in Ghana. Mm. If we, we've had several commissions of inquiry, I mean, um, commissions. We had the one I can remember is the Justice Archer. He was a former Chief Justice okay. of Ghana. And uh, that was um, during the late flight, Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, around there, where we had um, uh, some poli um, police reform. He set up a commission. Some, I think two police officers complained about policing, and there was a commission set up, and there have been some reforms. Um, I also remember IGP Namfuri setting up Dofsu in the late 1990s. I recall IGP Al Hassan also with this community policing and visibility. Mm -hmm. I know he came up with the visibility. And also, I don't know which IGP, but PIPS, 
the, the, the institution under police that you can report police misconduct. But they don't do much. It's also been decentralized. Mm, but they don't do much. You take <laughs> your issue there. <laughs> the, the policeman will be sent on peacekeeping and your case will be still born. But at least, the, <laughs> and I think we've uh, reached, we, especially with um, IT technology, social media, and all that, and uh, the present emerging crime trends. It's time, I'm hoping IGP Dan Paris sits down and then comes up with some massive major reforms that will change the face of the police. But very urgently, the communication outfit of the police needs to be overhauled. It is totally unacceptable that ACP Kwesi Fori will refuse to provide information in a timely manner to Ghanaians when we face such a precarious situation as kidnapping. That is totally callous on his part as an ACP who has even been in that position. He was um, in charge of... Uh, um, he was the director he was for the public director affairs. For that. So no, he's he has director experience. general. <laughs> you have, he has experience. So he has no... no Kwesi Fori has absolutely no excuse to behave the way he's behaving. We have regional uh, PROs for police throughout. He should give them the power to also speak. They are professionals, they have been trained, and they can speak. I know Irene, Central Region, I know Tenge, and several others who have worked well. Kwesi Fori should allow them to do their job and to speak. We Ghanaians want a situation in Ghana where we have law and order and security, our security is assured. The police have a duty to provide us with information. ACP Kwesi Fori cannot sit there and decide who should speak, which regional officer should speak, which one should not speak, and decide what sort of information he can give Ghanaians. Mm. He is a public officer and he should do his work of providing us information. Mm. People are being kidnapped and we want information from the police so that we go on our daily business. Okay. Now, and he, he should sit up and do exactly that. Now, in reference to the Takradi woman, I was asking the next steps for yes. her because now she's in the custody of the police at the central uh, police station, we are told. Um, can she be prosecuted for deceit of a public officer? I doubt whether that would um, that that would uh, uh, would actually succeed. The police have a duty to pro investigate and prosecute, so they should do their work. What we are seeing is that she needs medical help. She needs a clinical psychologist. She needs social welfare, and they are all state institutions that are ready, willing, and able to help. But I know if we do that, uh, Honorable yes. uh, Bampuadu, it, it, it may then, for want of a better way of putting it into, a, I don't want to sound insensitive, it may seem as if she may be getting away with making these false claims, which is what we don't want The prosecution, to do. the investigati investigation and prosecution can go on. We're not saying it shouldn't go on. What we're saying is that it should be approached in a, holistic and comprehensive manner. Because the Constitution, Article 18, and also um, guarantees her rights as a suspect. She has rights as a suspect. And so if she has mental health needs, if she has medical needs, if she needs a clinical psychologist, or she needs the, she need, the need to do a social inquiry report to assess her circumstances, the police who, um, she's in the custody of the police, they ought to provide her those services. And that is what I am, um, I am recommending, that the, the, the investigation, the prosecution, and her needs should be addressed in a holistic um, um, manner. And, and information and communication to the public should be done in a strategic way so that the public, um, the, the trust of the police is restored the, the trust that the public have in the police is restored, and we get timely, relevant um, information, and we trust the information to be true. Mm -hmm. Having regard to the circumstances now, and even to the public comments that you have read out on this 
uh, program, we can see it is obvious that Ghanaians do not trust the police in terms of the information they are churning out with respect to this particular case. Mm -hmm. And we need to roll that back and um, the police need to assess and uh, come up with um, information that Ghanaians would trust. And, and, and Jifa, uh, you know, I, I spoke about the need for an anti-kidnapping uh, unit. I mean, modern technology uh, grants us endless opportunities to be able to confront emerging crimes. Uh, there's a, a technology called triangulation. Anywhere you go with your phone, it communicates with cell sites. Okay, so from a command and control unit, they are able to tell where you are at any point in time. So if uh, there's a kidnapping, obviously the kidnappers would make an attempt to get in touch with the victim's family. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we make any attempt to find out where the calls are coming from? Because so far as I'm concerned, uh, with the Takuradi girls, I understand the kidnappers spoke with their family, with the police for a number of days. Mm. Okay, so I'm sure that if we had followed up on that, you need a to court order to get uh, phone you, records. That is the problem. You, yes, that, that, that is the, the challenge. You need um, um, an, so an expert motion. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So yeah. what what in essence happens is the police would make a request to the court. So the court would write to the various telcos, and usually when you take it to the telcos, it takes them at least a week to provide you yeah. with that information. And we have the systems. Look, to we track. have the systems to track without requiring a, a court order. But I, I, well, maybe the systems are reserved for some few. But, but for, in for the you interest of uh, the right to privacy. And the right to information. Human yeah, rights. Sorry, not the, right to information. But, but the, the, data, the data protection, the data protection law. law. But you see, um, Special circumstance, or what do they, how do they yes, even yes. say? I mean, they are there, yes. Special, you know. So, at least uh, then the telco so should have a certain timeline. If it's under these situations, maybe within 24 yeah, hours, you know, going this, through that, the court system and all that. that you can, for example, if there's a hostage situation and you need to tap, do you have to go through the court process? Well, you still have you know, to follow say, due you process. You have to strike the balance between privacy and security there's absolutely no way it is in any absolute. part of the world to yes. ensure absolute security without tampering no, with privacy. No, but that right is not absolute. Mm -hmm. The constitution uh, takes care of those exceptions. So public exactly. order, safety, Good. security and all that. Good. So I'm sure the security services have their yes, ways. But yeah. there was but, a criticism but, but, though that the inability to secure the records to determine the number that made the phone call was part of the reason why even she was uh, she had disappeared for a much lengthier period. But what about the, you know, there's a lady in Kumasi mm -hmm. who I think she works with either the Lands Commission in Kumasi or the Land ah, Valuation Board. In the Board. Eastern Region, the, the Eastern wife region. of an academic at yes, KNUSD. Yes, the wife of a lecturer. based in the, the oh, Eastern right. Region, yes. And um, up till now, We've not heard. We've not heard anything. anything. Um, I'm sure it's been the family or her friends and others who have been Pushing posting regularly yeah. on social media. Um, I, I think I've, I've read a police um, statement or so one, but we have not had any updates. Mm. So it's interesting that with um, the Western Region one, we are having like every 12 hours we are having updates, and then with the other kidnapping because I, I do remember this lady um, there was even a vigil and all that we are not hearing anything mm -hmm. from the police and this is what this is my concern about um, the communication yeah, yeah. Uh, from from the because this is something that the eastern region uh, PRO could could have handled yeah, uh, not, and so what is happening you yeah. know why is there a fixation and higher than 20 percent um, interest. I'm not saying there shouldn't be an interest, but we see the contrast of police communication. Whereas with this lady in Eastern Region, Land Valuation or Lands Commission, the we zone, haven't seen much. much. We are not oh, seeing any, we are not hearing how the investigation is going on, what is happening, nothing. Okay. So that's where I, I am saying that the police are being on the defensive with this particular Western Region case, and they just want to project a supposed good image, which is not right. Okay. We take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Ego Farming. Show Saturdays at 4 p.m. on TV3. This Saturday on Music Music. This year, uh, we know come to play. Are you ready for unsigned hype? Too much calling. Where my baby know they pick up. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, sister Effia. If I say I love you, no be say you are a fool. You mentioned a while ago that you have a period, a set period for music. I'm eating. Yes, clicks. <laughs> you see my back, Georgia. See my front, Georgia. Send your word that now you know. Send your word that now you know. Send your word that now you know. Music Music shows every Saturday at 8 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. God bless you. I greet you in the name of He who died and arose on the third day, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to pull you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Join me on this station, a word that will move you to your next dimension, a word that will break every chain. And I promise you, you will encounter power, you will encounter fire, you will encounter light. Voice of the Eagle shows every Sunday at 7 a.m. on TV3. Skipping breakfast is not ideal because you may end up missing some essential nutrients and also end up snacking all throughout the day. So hop on the fat to fit train and lose weight the, the right, right way. way. Let go. The stage is set. The battle lines have been drawn. Are you going to play or you're ready for an offer to go home? You're going to play. Type of free kick in which a player can score a goal directly. No, you got it wrong. Are you ready to be part of the thrills, fireworks and excitement as the three tussle to win big and chip away part of the mega 250,000 Ghana CDs cash from the boss? 2,600, you've done very well. Disappointed. Disappointed? Yeah. Hey, can't you? The Game Show shows Sundays at 4 p.m. on TV3. The Boss TV Game Show, proudly brought to you by G Money. And you're welcome back. Let's just read some comments before we wrap up here. And um, these comments, this one coming from Abdul Razak from Boku. All the brouhaha surrounding the kidnapped Takradi woman is very dramatic. And all hopes lie in the hands of the police. So we wait for them to do justice in bringing matters to rest. Uh, this one from Albert Kweku at Ashali Butre. Please, as to whether the lady was pregnant or not, or whether she got missing or not and was finally found by the carpenter, I would rather encourage the husband to take legal action against the hospital, the regional minister, and the police. And um, on Twitter, this one from David says, Good morning. Contradictory responses are being given by the parties, that is the police, the regional minister, the woman and the residents, all providing different scenarios. From my point of view, she may have been coerced to say uh, what she is now saying, and the evidence adduced may be vindicating the police. And so we have the timeline of how all of this uh, went down. Uh, this whole week has been engulfed by this whole issue. Uh, but um, looking at what we have, we see that uh, it started off with her uh, reported missing in Takradi. Uh, then reports emerged about kidnappers demanding a ransom while holding her hostage. Then the police also declared 
her missing. A team of 40 policemen were dispatched to find her, uh, but we know that it is one person who found her eventually and later on contacted the police. And days later, she was also found at a church premises, uh, reportedly unable to speak and purportedly without uh, her pregnancy. So uh, let's uh, wrap up, uh, but I think one of the key issues we need certainly to get some closure on is why the regional minister would offer money for the kidnapping. Could it also be that this was meant to be a bait to trap the individuals involved. Which individual? Those involved in I the mean, kidnapping. You see, whatever it is, whatever it is, I would expect that the regional security council, led by the regional minister, would work in tandem with the Ghana Police Service. Obviously, from the facts coming up, it's obvious that, well, the police are saying they were not aware. They are saying they haven't received any money. The regional minister is saying that he gave, or his aide is saying that he gave money. So I see that they, they were not working, perhaps they were not working together. And I know the police, uh, um, the uh, regional uh, police commander is also a member of RegSec. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what is happening with that. that. And, uh, and I think it would be better if they sorted it out in private. Okay. I mean, within their official circles. But for the aid to the regional minister to be, I don't know whether he was on radio or TV. It was or, radio. But for this to become public also has um, creates a further dent in this public mistrust of um, the police and security services. And the management of the And the management of communication. So it would be better if they sorted that out um, amongst the two state institutions because it doesn't augur well, especially coming from the um, Western region. In terms of what, what I am saying is that whatever the case is, whether fake pregnancy, not fake pregnancy, whether kidnapping or not pregnant, um, not, not kidnapping. kidnapping. For even a woman to go through this whole length of perhaps faking a pregnant or what, it shows that there is a fundamental problem. It could be medical, it could be psychiatric, it could be psychological. So there's a need for some assistance. And Ghanaians would have been um, felt assured that her, the, wom the woman's interest, Penny Mensah's interest was being catered for if the police had included a sentence or two of that aspect of, their, um, of that in their statement that she has a lawyer, so she's being um, represented, there's a medical team who is looking after her social, psychiatric and all that, that would, would have helped. They should go ahead with their investigation and uh, possible prosecution. Nobody is saying they shouldn't. But at the end of the day, Ghanaians want to know exactly what happened. If she if she is prosecuted and is taken to court and she recants once again the claims uh, that she faked the pregnancy, faked the the kidnapping, to what extent would that probably? Um, you know, harm the, the prosecuting process against her? No, the, the issue because is that... Because she could easily say I was forced well, to the, say yeah, this. The issue is that she needs legal, at this point in time, she needs legal, rep even for the police, in the interest of the police, and in the interest of their investigation and their prosecution, it would be in their interest to reach out to the legal aid board and request for a pro bono, a lawyer, for uh, for her, if they are, if FIDA is also in Western Region or there, um, I know the Ghana Bar Association is in Western Region, and uh, with uh, the new our new um, Ghana Bar president, this this is some this is the first case that he should take up to ensure that lawyers also um, ha I mean have um, also engage in um, some civic responsibility and um, provide services to this um, to paying Mensa. Okay. So she should get um, legal representations in the interest of the police and then also psych um, a psychologist and a medical. So we will want the police to, to have a more um, multi-sectorial team to address this. Psychologists, right. doctors, 
and then they can they can go ahead with their investigation and prosecution. Okay, well, yes, well, I do. And, and it's also in the best interest of the police to ensure all these are done, uh, because there are instances where you have uh, evidence against uh, a suspect, yet the court throws it out because of the manner in which the evidence was even acquired. Okay, so the right processes uh, has to be followed. And talking about the regional minister, I mean, there's absolutely no way, under no circumstance, uh, should a minister take a security decision without recourse to the structures on the ground uh, with respect to the regional security council. And uh, this is quite common. That is why it's important that after ministers are appointed, they really need to be trained. Remember what happened in the Ashanti region with... Uh, the the Jurassic 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 just because issue. someone called him, we don't know who. Was it an intelligence source? We don't know. Someone called him and said there was chaos. And so he decided to also call the military in. So they really need training. But overall, this gives me the opportunity to uh, uh, say hello to one Inspector Francis Quesiza Glago. He's a police officer who have received information, is doing marvelously well. Uh, a lady with her family were moving with children, and the way he interviewed the children to ascertain whether they were the parents, the lady says they were, they were very impressed, and he is worth mentioning for the great work he is doing. Thank you very much. And I also and, uh, mention my good friend Teku, and also uh, Simon uh, patient, Teku. Uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Teku, yes, and then um, uh, Patient Square and all the others yeah, who there, have really some, I mean, there are great done, officers uh, yes, out there really doing great lots, officers, lots of officers. work and, you know, and uh, Joe, uh, and Joe and, of Dofsu. Yeah, um, Dofsu, the Dofsu team are also doing uh, very throughout the country actually. Yeah. So we, uh, we just want well. more. So yes. that's what it is. So thanks very much. Many thanks to our guests, Honorable Oye Bampo Ado. Many thanks. Thanks to you, Adib Sani, as well uh, for joining us. You've been watching the Key Points live from TV3 and 3FM 92.7 and also on 3news.com. Uh, you've been following us on our Facebook page. Many thanks to all of you for sending your messages for our two topics. It's been a very, very packed show. Uh, we will join you again next Saturday. Coming up next, of course, is Warm Up Plus. Thank you for being with me, and I'll be here next week. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>